I brought you guys a gift. Hit it when I get in position. Apologize to the front row for all that. But fella, th that is what a 36-year-old man can do with a free afternoon. <laughs> Never give up on your dreams. I love to dance. Does anyone else in here enjoy dancing? Yeah! Right. And those people that yelled, I bet only maybe 10% of them were any good at it, right? Yeah! That's the point. Go out. Be an idiot. Have fun. Yeah. I love dancing for a reason you might not understand. I love dancing because I'm a white person. <laughs> I figured out at a very early age that no other race has any expectations of me on the dance floor. <laughs> we just get to make it up as we go. And all other races have to watch and go. See that? That's white garbage, you see it? <laughs> Don't interrupt him, he's having a great time. A lot of people are too nervous to even get started. Again, it's just effort. If you need a how-to, I'll give you the 101 real quick. Get out your pen and paper. This is how every white person gets started in their life. The first move we learn, the march. <laughs> your feet don't leave the ground, your hips swing, elbows tucked in, all right? This alone is not gonna, you're not gonna go home with anybody, all right? <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, this is not gonna do it. You combine it with another move, maybe? And that second move, be sneaky about it, real subtle. The pelvic thrust. <laughs> you sneak it in and move on. See how subtle, it's nice, it's stylish. If I catch you at a nightclub doing this, I'm gonna pull you aside and say, that's not what we talked about at the joke joint. <laughs> if you're doing one and two, by now you have a circle of people formed around you. Intelligent phones are out because you're going on the YouTube. <laughs> the people up in the sound booth are freaked out like, yo, uh, Tommy, where's the dancing rule book? Uh, I think it's being rewritten. That could be you. <laughs> and what you do with all that attention, right? When you feel like it's about to bust in there, you cover your eyes and crouch slowly <laughs> and mysteriously. And when they least expect it, hit them with move number three. The stargazer. <laughs> Again, folks, I'm 36 and I just did that move. If you perfect one, two, and three, you're gonna go home alone. That's a fact. I'm just letting you know right ahead. Time. Oh man, I, I, I really do love dancing. Here's the problem. I don't like modern music. I don't know if anyone can relate to me. Uh, Lady Gaga, Katy Perry. Lil Wayne, these are the people I'm supposed to love. I'm sorry, I think that's awful music. If you see this on YouTube, Lil Wayne, I apologize to you. He looks, he, he looks like a little Chucky doll to me, all right? That dude haunts my nightmares. He's got a Chucky doll with metal teeth and predator braids. I don't know. I don't know what he's capable of. The dude's nut. He's gonna show up to one of my shows like, I heard you was talking trash about me. <laughs> oh, pass out from fear. <laughs> I miss music that everybody loved, because we're talking about modern music. The Grammys are supposed to know more about what good music is. But for the last three years consecutively, 
The Grammys have voted Adele the best living musician. I'm sorry, I like Adele as much as any white person's obligated to. But she's a little boring. Every one of her music video, that was pretty cool. Let's give that a little round of applause too. Thanks, water. Every one of Adele music videos is the exact same. She's always seated, mood lighting, and as her song progresses, she artistically slides out of her chair. If you haven't seen an Adele music video, this is all of them rolled into one. You're welcome. <laughs> There's a fire burning in my heart, reaching a fever when she's bringing me out the dark. There's a fire burning in my heart, reaching a fever. Just... Best musician? No. Where's the energy? Where's the passion, right? I feel like she wrote that entire album after missing an insulin shot. I do. I can't prove it, right? Now, what was an era of music that everybody loved? Real quick, make some noise if you like 80s music. We like it. We like it for the same reasons. It's silly. It's overproduced. It's exciting. Like, th my favorite thing had to be at live performances. They didn't come out and say, how's everyone doing? That's some 90s nonsense. Because in the 80s, if they were worth their weight, they knew you bought the ticket and you were going to sit there as long as they wanted you to. So in the 80s, they knew how to draw out the mystery. And how did they do that? They always started back at a wall. Your attendance was inconsequential to them, you know what I mean? You think Bruce Springsteen stressed out about your comfort levels? Never. They'd all be back at a wall, someone in their ear like, hey John, you have a full audience behind you, maybe acknowledge them. Uh, it's the 80s, I got this, okay? Maybe in 10 years we'll talk about that method. But when that beat started, it blew your mind just... See that over there? Bing, bang, come on, baby, da ba da ba, chimmy chunga, come on, baby, da ba, chimmy chunga. Yeah. The 80s turned me into a registered flex offender, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> but that was the last time when all races got to dance like they were white. Think about it. The 80s, they were off the chain. A full grown man could do double high kicks anytime he wanted. 80s? <laughs> I dare you to try that today. You will go home with zero friends. Like, uh-uh, Frank, double high kick your way home, okay? We wanted to talk to women. Get an Uber, right? In the 80s, if you were dancing with your girl and you wanted to make a statement, all you had to do was run back to a wall, pretend to punch it, and that was the sexiest move of all. Just like, hold that thought, Beverly. double dip it, right? You had time for the double dip in the eights. I miss it. I think, I, I think we have enough people here right now that if we work together, we can time travel back to 1988. Will you guys help me out real quick? Everyone get your hands clapping like this. Clap, 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 and get into it. Do, 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 I try to discover a little something to make me sweet. Oh, baby, refrain from breaking my heart. If you know it, sing it. I'm so in love with you. Stop. Give yourselves a round of applause. Was that not the fastest that song was ever sang? Where's your rhythm, Houston, Texas? Oh, man, guys, I got to tell you some good news. This year, I got married. Check that out. Or as I like to say, I found the woman I want to raise me. <laughs> Is that not accurate, right? I pretty, much, I pretty much told her, hey, here's where my mom left off. This is where you begin. Sign here. <laughs> and women, I blame you, right? I, I, I absolutely presented myself accurately to my wife. This is what I am. This is what I'm about. Are you willing to take on this responsibility? But I think in the history of choosing men, women have never looked at a man and thought, He's everything I could ever want and more. Finished project. <laughs> you wouldn't date a finished project because women like to get their hands dirty, right? You're not looking for a soulmate. You're looking for a house to flip. That's what it feels like. You're looking at us like real estate, like I'm going to put in hardwood floors and ceiling fans. 
for curb appeal, look at my necktie, right? I, uh, I bought a new car. It's not new. It's, uh, it's just for stand-up comedy. I'm on the road about 75,000 miles a year. I drive that much. So I was looking for something that would get me gas mileage, and nobody would want to steal anything from it. I hit the nail on the head. I bought a 2009 Nissan Versa. Yeah, that's the, that's the exact response this car deserves. It is silver. Everything inside is a dark gray plastic. It's manual windows, manual locks. It doesn't even have anti-lock brakes in 2009. This is what all cars would look like if the Soviet Union had won the Cold War. That's what I'm talking about. But it hits all my essentials. I'm not worried about that. I now have a car so basic that I will get to use a key, an actual car key, to unlock the door for my wife open it, let her get inside, close the door behind her, walk around, give her that opportunity to unlock my door. Romance, that's what yeah. I'm talking about. It wasn't until I got the car home that I realized that Nissan didn't put a lock on the passenger door. Because Nissan decided at the factory, if you're buying this model, you're never getting laid. That's what they decided. It was in the fine print probably, right? The very first road trip we take in the Versa, uh, about my wife, she comes from a well-to-do family. Her car has heated and cooled leather seats, backup defrosted cameras, like crazy amounts of technology. So driving in the Versa with me, you know, good on her. This probably feels like a horse and buggy ride. She's a good sport. And uh, we're driving from Austin, Texas to Las Vegas. It's late at night and I'm driving. She's in the passenger seat, a car a couple hundred yards back has his high beams on, and they're bouncing off the side view mirror and into her eyes, and so she turns to me and says, baby, can you adjust the side view mirror? Those brights are giving me a migraine. Not a headache, a migraine. Not a runny nose, typhoid, women. <laughs> and I turn to her and I go, oh, babe, you can adjust the mirrors on your side. And she's like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> How do, you, how do you adjust it? And I'm like, oh, you gotta reach out and touch it. That's the, <laughs> just poke it wherever you want it to go. That's the technology I can afford right now. <laughs> what I tell you about making me feel bad. She's like, I'm sorry, babe, I know how to do it. I'm so sorry, dude. <laughs> how do you roll the window down? And I'm like, grab that handle, just get out. <laughs> I didn't do that, okay? I did not kick her out of a moving car. Let's get that out of the way. <laughs> oh, guys, I, uh, one of the things my wife and I got together on, like one of the things that we, uh, is one of the match points that was like unshakable. Neither one of us want to have children. We're not interested, not now, not ever. That's what we say now, right? No. It's just because we've identified we're too selfish to be selfless. That's all we've identified, right? I'm chasing this dream. I can't afford another child. A little me? Who wants that? No one. Besides, I know I look like a registered sex offender, but I can assure you I'm not registered, so relax. Uh, we don't want kids, and I figured out when, exactly when I figured it out. If there's a young man in here con considering fatherhood, I want you to listen to my tale and then decide. Because uh, I was inside a Subway sandwich looking out the glass, and a woman, I would, I would categorize her as a soccer mom, she pulls up in her Chevy Tahoe, finds a spot right in front of me, she puts it in park, leaves the engine running, gets out, leaves the door open, runs around to the passenger door, opens it up, gets the baby carrier out, sets it on the ground, closes the door, goes to the back, gets the baby out of the car seat, fastens him into the carrier, closes the door, picks the baby up, goes to the back, lifts the tailgate, gets a box, closes the tailgate, goes around, sets the, bo sets the box down, Turns off the car, closes it, locks it, box under arm, goes inside a UPS shipping center for 30 seconds, comes outside, does all of that in reverse. I'm on my third white chocolate chip macadamia cookie. <laughs> I've not offered to hold one door for this lady. I have no manners. I know I'm not ready to be a dad because if I was in that exact same situation, I would look at that baby and go, I'll be right back. <laughs> Who noticed I called it that baby, right? <laughs> Who noticed this writing shotgun? I am not ready. Plus, I'm afraid of clowns. Anyone else afraid of clowns? <laughs> right? Did you see how many people say they weren't? Who's not afraid of clowns? Make some noise. Yeah! If a clown knocked at your door at midnight, would you answer it? Yeah! Yeah! We're scary after sundown, that's my right. point. Scarier to me than clowns are people that stand too close to walls like this. Yeah! <laughs> that's scary. I know that's scary, because if you were about to get on an elevator and someone was already on it like that, 
you'll get the next elevator, right? Like, oh no, <laughs> peace be with you. <laughs> I saw the movie Devil, you old broad, not tonight. <laughs> I know I'm not ready to be a father because in every possession or poltergeist film, it's always the children that go making friends with spirits, totally ruining your, your property investment. Stop making friends, right? there's no one out here. In every poltergeist or possession film, there's that obligatory scene where sleepy dad's walking down the hallway on the way to the restroom and he glances in his kid's room and his kid's up against the wall like this. <laughs> If that's me and that's my kid, I'm gonna look in and go, oh my God. Good luck with that, Jeffrey. I got a, I got a, I got a robe on, sure, but I walk around with a charged power drill. I'm a terrible dad. Ready to call this dad stuff off at the first sign of Diablo, right? You can have him, right? If he's really my kid and not the devil, he's gonna know how to fashion a rope out of sheets to lower himself down. Find me, tell me he's not the devil. <laughs> uh, that's a weird way to end that joke, I realize, but in that joke, I have a two-story house, so in the future, comedy's going really well. <laughs> I wrote that for me. Oh man, I love messing with people. It is my favorite thing to do. Uh, my favorite way to do it, I like to go to the gym. I get on the military press. I don't work out, I just sit there. Because if you hog a machine at the gym long enough, you know what happens, right? You're beckoning that buff bully to come up and try to intimidate you like, yo bro, other people are waiting on that machine. To which I reply, I'm so sorry, I didn't know you were waiting. You can have it. <laughs> Do you need a spotter or We'll go ahead and work out, tough guy. If your heart will let you. <laughs> Guys, you've been amazing. My name's John Stringer. Thank you so much for coming out, everybody.